Well, praise the Lord. Good to be here in the house of God today. This place that God has allowed us to be in so that we can worship together. Amen? Amen. 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 Hey, if you got your Bibles with you today, let's go to Romans chapter 9. And uh, we'll get into... We got some Toby Mac going on up here. I'm not sure what that is, but... Oh, okay, there it is. I'm like, man, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing some kind of beeping going on back here. It's that. It's the screen. All right, that's kind of weird me out for a minute. Like, what is that going on? All right, Romans chapter nine, and I uh, we'll start at verse six this morning. Romans nine six. We're going to read through verses thirteen. Romans nine six through thirteen. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. It was said to her, The older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Father in heaven, today we praise you, we thank you, God, for being God, for being the one true God, Father God. We, we bless your name today. We praise your name today, God. We acknowledge you today here at this church in this local body. We acknowledge you as King of the universe, lover of our souls, who has given all for us. And God, I pray this morning that we learn to give all to you. Lord God, that we accept your wisdom. We accept your choices and God, that we humble ourselves and freely follow you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And amen. I still got something weird going on up here. I don't know what it is, but it's really distracting. Huh? We'll give that one a try, but I don't think that's what it is. Is it that one? There's a lot of electric stuff going on up here, but it's like, whoo, it's really getting me off. Okay, we'll go ahead with it. I've got that problem with background noise. Some of y'all may not understand that. But if there's somebody talking behind me and I'm talking to you, I'm not hearing you. I'm hearing the one behind me. So that's what's going on right now. I'm hearing that behind me, so it's kind of distracting. But we'll try to get through it. Okay. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about, in part two, we're going to talk about... Uh, Freedom of choice. And today is focusing on, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we started this series of messages. And last week, it was that pardon the interruption, but God's got another message for us. Remember that? And if you didn't get a chance, you might get a chance to see it. Uh, Lonnie's done a great job last week. Just want to give him a hand. He done a great job last week with that video. And uh, really appreciate what he's doing. We're just getting kicked off with that. So um, I think you're going to see some good things come out of that ministry as well. Uh, last week we had the interruption and the Lord wanted to go a different route, but I really believe we're getting get, get back on track with this series of messages on freedom of choice. And these are lessons on justice. A, a couple weeks ago we, uh, we talked about this and how this world we live in, the culture we live in, what we have, we have grown up in our, in our culture and the, the ones that's behind us and the generation after us. Uh, we have a tendency to look at things and claim that's unfair. Um, why would you do this, God? And why are you choosing this way or whatever? And a lot of times we want to we want to cry out, God, it's unfair. Why are you doing what you're doing? And uh, without regards to understanding who God really is and understanding that God is all wise. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about him being all wise. He reveals himself as all knowing. And this is where today, this message is going to help you have more trust. I'm not saying that I have that ability, but I believe as more as we study the Word of God, you'll learn more to trust in God and the choices He makes. Amen? Amen. 
So it's not pastor's ability to get you to trust God more, but I believe the more you get into God's Word, and this these series of sermons is actually challenging you as a believer to go deeper in the Word of God. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to continue to dive in deeper. And let me tell you, folks, there's an ocean, oceans of depth of God's Word. Amen? Amen. We can just get in there and go as deep as we want to go. And God is saying, come on. And He's encouraging that. Amen? So I never want to discourage you to read your Bibles. I want to encourage you to read your Bibles. Now, um, we got the PowerPoint back today. And uh, so I'm going to try to work with that, try to help you understand, take down some notes, and uh, hopefully this will help you in the sermon and in your studies as well. Uh, we're going to talk today about God's authority, particularly the Word of God. We're going to talk about His choices, God's choices, the wisdom, okay? Uh, based solely, His choices based solely on grace. Uh, Paul, we're going to talk about Paul's explanation, as we read earlier in, in Romans chapter 9, Paul's explanation of choosing uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then ultimately uh, the nation Israel. Chosen by God to bless the world. Now here's the outline, and I think it might be up there. Uh, the outline is this. Family ties, the word of God, God's choice, object, objects of God's choice, and what will you choose? Now, for some of you, you're like, oh, pastor, get on with the preaching, man. I don't want to hear this, but a lot of you like to take notes, and I want you to be blessed in your note-taking so you can study the Word of God. This is what this is all about, okay? So, we're going to talk a little bit this morning in trusting God's choices. Uh, the first thing we need to do to understand where we came from, what this is all about, and like Ken Ham says, go back to Genesis, Okay? So we're going to go back to Genesis. Now we're going to, at first we're going to talk about the first 11 chapters. Now we're not going to read that, but I just want to kind of give you a summed up overview of Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 11. Okay? A lot of you are like, well, I don't know about this. And I was just talking to a person last week about reading and trudging through Genesis. And this person is at... At chapter 4 and chapter 5, where if you've ever read chapter 5, you get into the table of nations, you'll get into, and he begat he, and he begat he, and he begat he, and so on and so forth. And it's kind of hard to trudge through that. But the awesome thing of it is, when you read about them, you'll see where the tribes come out of, and later on in Genesis, and later on through the scriptures, you'll see, you're like, wow, I remember reading about that back in Genesis chapter 4 and chapter 5. And that's really cool. So, just to kind of sum up Genesis chapters 1 through 11 is telling us the book of Genesis, first of all, is the book of beginnings, the book of origins, okay? The book of origins tells us that God created this planet, planet Earth, amen? Yeah. Now, I'm just going to go real quick and just kind of sum it up real quick for you. The Earth was created before anything else. Understand that. Despite of what you've been told by History Channel and other scientists, the earth was created before anything else as far as creation goes. Okay? The Bible says in the beginning, God created what? Heavens and the earth. Okay? The earth, this atmosphere, everything. He created it. Okay? Now, beyond that, he went on and tells us in Genesis chapter 1, gives us steps of how he created things. Days 1, days 2, and so on and so forth. In six days, God created everything we now see and everything we understand to be the universe or what we have the ability to understand, okay? Now, in that creation, God tells us in his account here, when this is his account of history, he tells us that he placed man in this place called the garden, the Garden of Eden, okay? And he put him there to tend the garden, and we know that God told Adam and Eve that they could eat of any tree, any herb bearing fruit, anything except for one tree that's in the center of the garden, okay? Or in the garden, in the midst of the garden, sorry. And that tree of knowledge, good and evil, we know and understand that Adam and Eve decided from upon themselves to take and eat by the beguilement of Satan, the serpent, and from that was the fall. What almost... Immediately after that, it was cast out of the garden. We read where the first death took place as far as the first murder. We know that Cain murdered his brother Abel. And then from that point, we know that Cain went and took a wife 
And it was his sister or niece or something like that. And so then we start reading about the nations. We start reading about the origins of, of nations and, and people and how, how smart they were. You go through that. It's really awesome. I hope that kind of triggered your inquisitiveness there. Maybe go back and read it. And you'll, you'll find where the man began to multiply over the earth. And then it says at one point they began to call upon the Lord. And then there was these Nephilim who came down. And they saw that the women, the sons of men, the daughters of men were, were attracted to them. So they, would, they knew them. And then they had children. We know that was that, not the Nephilim, but they became the Nephilim or the giants. And they, these giants actually caused men to sin more wickedly than they would naturally do. And the wickedness began, and it was so bad that God decided to judge the earth. And there was only one family that wasn't affected by this Nephilim and the seed of Satan, which was the lineage of Noah, Noah's family. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord in Genesis chapter 6, and we read where God commands Noah to build an ark. And from that commandment, from that commandment, he built this ark and the animals, he, he saved the animals and certain plant life and things like that. God judged the earth because man's sin was so wicked. The Bible says that God repented, that he even made man. Okay? It was that bad. Well, after the flood, we know that there was three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and they spread out. And then there was nations being built up again. And then we read an account of the Tower of Babel. And from this area, the men decided once again to rebel against God. Where God told them to subdue the earth and spread over the earth, they decided to rebel against God. And so they decided upon themselves they were going to make a name for themselves and build this tower. Build this, what we know today, is something like a ziggurat or something like you might see that Mayan temple. They got that. That's where all that came from. And they built this big tower, this big temple, this place, center of worship. Well, God in His mercy judged these people. And you're like, well, how is that merciful? What He did, instead of destroying everybody, He confused them and gave them all languages. Well, at that time, they were one language, and it's where all the languages come from. From those languages, the people began to group up. And we call them today people groups. Now, the world will call them races. The world calls them races, okay? We have